Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am once again going to look back at my reading year so far and when I say once again it's because I've already done a video about my favorite books of 2017 so far but in this video I would like to look at some more specific questions. So as I'm filming this I have currently read 72 books this year which is a lot. And I do hope that I will be able to continue that in the upcoming months. I have a goal of reading 120 books this year. Not that I am eager to fulfill that goal. If I read less, that's okay. And if I read more, that's splendid. But my goal is 120 books. It sounds crazy, but that's what I've been reading in the past three or four years, every year. So I'm pretty sure I can do this and I'm eager to dive into all of the upcoming titles that are waiting for me. But for now, let's just take a step back and look at what I have been reading and some of my highlights and low points of my reading year so far. There is a tag going around on booktube which is called the mid-year book freakout tag and I have let myself be inspired by most of those questions but I do have some new questions as well which I have made up myself and I've also altered a little bit of the questions that already existed. So in case you were wondering that's what's happening. I have a total of 10 questions to look at today so let's just get started and the very first question is perhaps the most interesting one for all of you and for me as well and that is the best book I've read so so far in 2017. As I mentioned previously, I've already done a video about my favorite books of this year so far, but if I had to choose one book, that one book that really made an impact on me, I'm actually going to choose a book from my honorable mentions. So it's a book that's been growing on me in the past weeks and that has now become my favorite book of this year so far. That is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. This book is just beautiful. It's horrific and it's very heartbreaking but it's beautiful nonetheless. So the next question is new release I haven't read yet but that I want to and for this one I have decided to go for The Power by Naomi Alderman which is a person who was tutored by Margaret Atwood herself. That alone sounds interesting to me because I believe that The Power is very similar to Margaret Atwood's storytelling and maybe also writing style i wouldn't know yet but for that alone i think this book sounds interesting i'm also pretty sure it's been nominated for a big prize this year maybe it was the man booker prize i'm not sure about that but that also shows me that there must be some kind of depth to the story i actually also have another book lined up which is a pretty new release and which is kind of interesting to me but I'm not yet sure if I actually want to read it and that is The Sport of Kings by C.E. Morgan which is a book about racing, horse racing and it's not normally a topic I would read about but still I find this topic kind of fascinating and I do like to read books with diverse topics and not just the books that I know beforehand that I probably would like to read, if that makes sense. The third question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I'm not a person who sits around eagerly waiting for that specific release, not normally at least. So I haven't really checked out a lot of the new releases that are coming out in September or October or in the near future. But there is one book that caught my attention and that is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Eng. And the only reason why I'm interested to read this one is because I have already read another book by this author. Let me just find it behind my stack of books. And that is Everything I Never Told You, which was a really... How can you explain it? It was kind of a mystery, but it's more about the family and how they kind of grow apart through this crime that has happened than it's about the crime itself. And I really loved it for that. I'm interested to read more by this author and I believe Little Fires Everywhere is a good place to go. Fourth question is biggest disappointment. The book I've chosen might be a little bit controversial because a lot of people love it. It has been nominated for the Man Booker Prize this year 
and for that reason I read it but I didn't really like it and that is do not say we have nothing by Madeleine Thien the story was messy it was too long it was too complicated too many characters and the storyline in itself was interesting but not interesting enough so unfortunately this was just a two star reading for me if we continue with the other extreme i have the biggest surprise of this year i've decided to go for a book which i have had on my shelves for a lot of years but I hadn't picked it up because I had heard mixed reviews of it, even though it's by one of my favorite authors. I was kind of worried to pick it up and be disappointed, but it turned out to become one of my favorite books of this year, and that is The Colorless Tsuzuku Tasaki's Pilgrimage. This is the book which, you know, I always forget the English title. Something to do with The, the Colorless Tsuzuku Tasaki's Years of Pilgrimage, don't quote me on that. But this is by Haruki Murakami and I am quite a fan of his and this book is one of his better ones, I believe. It's about four or five friends who were best friends during their college years but then for some reason one day this group of friends decides to just plug out completely one of the men in this group of friends. And he doesn't know what he's done to be left outside of this group, but it happens. And then 10 years later or so, we get to follow him as, as he tries to find out what actually happened. The sixth question is favorite new author, debut or new to me? I tried to go back on my Goodreads list and take a look at some of the books I've read, obviously. And the one author that stuck out to me is Liz Moore. I have currently read two books of hers this year, which were really, really good. One was better than the other. And that one is The Unseen World by Liz Moore, the one that blew me away. The other book I've read of hers is Heft, which was published, I believe, in 2012. Let me just check. Yes, I'm correct. This one was good but in a different way it's one of those books that i think will grow on you so my initial impression was not that big of a impression that's not how you say it but you know what i mean but now that i've read it and put it back down i kind of find myself even more fascinated with it so there is something about this more and her brilliant storytelling so now i'm going to move on to some things some topics that are not especially about books I have read. The seventh question is about my favorite video I have done so far this year. Once again I took a look back at some of my previous videos and the one that stood out was my video on hidden gems on my bookshelves. I just really liked doing that video and finding those books that have been hiding and that I actually loved back when I read them some years ago but that I have somehow forgotten. It was so nice to find them again and talk about them on this channel, especially because it was books that I don't normally talk a lot about, even though I absolutely love them. So that video was a good reminder to myself. Question number eight is about my most beautiful book I have bought so far this year, and I had to go for this book. This is beautiful. It is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, and it is a retelling of Russian fairy tales. I especially loved how the first chapter is a retelling of the original story so that as a new reader of Russian fairy tales you are able to understand what is going on and see the connections between this story and the original one. This is the perfect read for winter when you are sitting in front of the fireplace with a blanket and a cup of hot chocolate. So I might just do that this winter and reread this book. Two questions left. The ninth one is about my favorite bookstagram picture. During this past half year, I have become kind of obsessed with Instagram. I used to upload pictures, but not really check my Instagram feed that often. But that has changed and now I'm finding myself checking it every single day, several times a day. So I've been inspired to upload some beautiful pictures myself if I might say so myself. I have three highlights I would like to mention. The first one is a picture of my bookshelves 
at a certain time of the day. This picture shows my books in the most beautiful lighting, I believe. This is the time of the day when the sun is about to go down, it's in the evening and I'm sitting in my couch looking at my beautiful book collection. This lighting is perfect for that and I was able to capture it on this specific day. Next photo I would like to highlight is a photo of some spring covers that I found and put out on my floors. I think it looks beautiful and it reminds me of spring and of relaxing times to come and to read. And then the third photo I would like to highlight is one of my Penguin Clothbound Classics photos. Now I do use my beautiful penguin books a lot in my Instagram feed just because they're beautiful. I mean they are there to be looked upon. I just love putting them out on my shelf and taking beautiful pictures of them. And that leads me to the very last question in this video and that is books I need to read by the end of this year. I have selected one book which I have to read, I want to read before 2017 ends. And that is a new book to me, a book that I literally received 30 minutes ago and I've been eagerly anticipating it for months and months. It's been out in English for several months but it's been out here in Denmark for about one month, I think. And then I decided to actually get it in English after all, just because it's a beautiful book and I love this author to pieces. Anyway, I'm rambling. This is the book I'm talking about, Paul Auster. I love him. And this is 4321. So this is his most recent release. It's a pretty big novel, as you can see. It's kind of the size of the Bible, which I'm not complaining about. I'm loving that. It's his first release in seven years and I mean I love Paul Auster so you can just guess at how eager I am to read this book but at the same time I want to savor it. I want to hide it and kind of get going with it at a special moment of time. It's going to be so interesting to see whether I like it or not. I mean, it's been some years since I last read Paul Auster and I have developed as a reader, so maybe I will end up not really liking him after all. I hope that's not the case, but this book I am most certainly going to read in the next six months and then of course I will let you know how I felt about it. Hopefully I'm going to love it. And also, let me just point out the most beautiful, touching dedication. Okay. I am definitely overselling this. But the dedication is for Siri Hustved, his wife. I love them as a couple. I mean, an author couple living in Brooklyn, surrounded by books. What more can you ask for? Try and look on Google for pictures of Paul Austers and Siri Hustved's apartment in Brooklyn because you will find yourself with your mouth open in wonder and in astonishment. So that is it for this video. That is it for my mid-year freak out questions. I hope you enjoyed it and until my next video, happy reading.